Keith Satangela. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to show you how to use these mini cutters in a little bit of a different way. Today I'm going to use the um, non-cutter side of them, the plastic edge, which I guess you could use as them as a cutter if you wanted as well. But I'm going to use them to imprint clay and fill those imprints with paint and um, pan pastels and show you two different ways to make this pendant. The first thing I'm going to do is I've got my black clay in a square of clay that's suitable for the size cutter I'm going to use. My cutter is large at 2.75 inches, so you can size yours appropriately to whatever shape or cutter size you're going to use. I'm going to use plain acrylic paint. This is just the cheapo stuff, folk art brand. And I'm going to dip the plastic side of the cutter into the paint and then imprint the clay with the paint pushing in slightly just to have a little bit of a recess because I do want to sand it when I'm done with it just to make sure that everything is crisp and that the paint is all within the little circles and didn't uh, get on the actual black clay to distort the image. So I'm dipping the cutter into the paint and then impressing that lightly into the clay. Um, if it sticks or it feels a little tight, I do spin it a little bit, just slight turn it, and that helps it come off of the clay. So I um, turn it a little bit while I'm lifting it up, and then um, that allows it to release the clay without having possible paint drips or anything come off of it. So you're going to continue making your design, um, and I am going to step down in the size of the ferrules um, as I go. So I'm going to start with my largest and then I'll work down to the smallest size and I'm just making random circles and imprinting this piece of clay and it's okay to re-dip and go back into the same impression. I'll do that quite often just because the first time doesn't always leave a nice amount of paint behind. Um, with the second imprint, I found that because it's already got a little bit of a shallow recess made by the first one, the paint does tend to fill that hole a little bit easier. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I have my design completed. And then I do want to mention is that I am cleaning my um, little cutter every time when I'm done with that particular size. I'm wiping it with a wet wipe. Uh, you could keep a, a little dish of water at your desk or work area and just drop it into that and then clean it at a later time. It's just such a small trace amount of paint that actually gets on the little mini cutter that I find it easier to wipe it off with a wet wipe. I'm going to work down from the largest size until I've um, got about five different sizes of the little circles on here. I'm not going to use the smallest one, even though um, it is very small. It leaves a solid paint dot instead of an outline of a circle, just because that um, little opening is so narrow. Now I'm going to set that one aside and let it dry. It only takes 10 or 15 minutes before the acrylic paint is fully dry. And I'm going to do the same thing with the piece of white, except I'm going to imprint it with black acrylic paint.
see that little tiny piece of black fleck between the two circles? I'm not going to worry about that overly because the sanding process will get rid of that easily. So once the um, paint is dry on both the black and the white, I'm going to combine them. There are more ways than one to do this process, and I will show you another way to put these two pieces together when I show you the metallics a little bit later. Um, I'm just using the same size cutter. That way my um, shape is um, symmetrical to the design. So I'm going to cut out the two areas. I'm going to push it together. I'm going to use a piece of paper to burnish over the top of it. That will help it adhere and smooth it together. And then I'm going to use my cutter to cut out my final shape, which I'll then um, put onto my form. Um, I use an oven safe form. I find that these little bath bomb uh, molds are perfect for this type of thing. And then I'm going to bake it for one hour. For this one, I want it to have metallic um, little circles, so I'm going to use the mini cutters, and again, I'm using the plastic side, not the metal side, and I'm going to imprint my design, but I'm going to push these a little deeper in the clay because I want a well that I can then fill up with the pan pastels, and then it will allow me to smooth it back over and leave the imprint. Because there's no paint or moisture on the plastic side of the mini cutters, they do tend to stick a little bit easier um, during this process. So remember to use the twist. A little bit of a twist will help it release when you lift them back up. Once my design is complete, I'm going to use a soft bristle brush and fill the recessed areas in with hand pastels. I'm going to use a couple of different colors of these metallic hand pastels. You could use micas or chalk powders to do the same type of um, application. Once I have the recessed areas completely filled in and I am going to brush them in pretty thoroughly, I'm going to use tape to remove the pan pastel from the top layer of the black clay and that will clean the image up and only highlight the circles with the metallic pan pastel.
I'm going to use the tape to remove the excess pan pastel. It will take a few times to do this. Just keep going over and over, um, changing your tape as needed until you have removed all of the excess pan pastel off the top of the image. Now I'm going to do the same process with the white piece. I'm just going to use slightly different metallic colors. I'll mix um, silver and copper for this side where I have gold and copper on the black side. I'm going to do this one a little bit differently in that I'm going to um, not cut out my primary shape until I've joined my pieces together. I will use the paper to smooth away any fingerprints and to make sure by burnishing it that the two colors are bonded together. I will spend some extra time cleaning up the edges of this one. That way I don't have to sand it when it comes out of the oven. I am going to leave this one matte just because I like the look of that flat black against the metallic sheens of the pan pastels. I'm going to do a little bit of wet sanding to make sure that I remove a couple of micro paint splatters. Once that's done, I'm going to sheet a piece of clay on the thickest setting and texture it with a texture sponge. Then I'll flip it over, use a little bit of bacon bond, and attach the pendant to the backing and form a simple bale. The bale form um, I'm using to drape it over a stainless steel rod that came with the beads and blends kit from tinypandora.com, but you could use any kind of oven safe item that you have that would just slide between the bale and the back of the pendant to keep it from collapsing in the heat of the oven.
once the bell's in place, I'm going to put the pendant face down into a metal round cutter just to use as a holding form. Um, that way it doesn't shift and roll around in the oven. I hope that you've enjoyed this very simple tutorial and that it jumpstarts your brain and gives you some ideas. Um, I can't wait to see what you make and I really appreciate the time that you've spent with me today watching the tutorial. Bye peeps.